One Punch Man is one of my most overlooked anime as of late. Originally, when it aired in 2015, the hype clouded my vision and I passed it off as nothing more than a one-joke man, when a superhero defeats everything with a singular punch and then we laugh. Since the hype of Season 2 started back up, I went into this anime once again with a fresh and less clouded outlook on the series and coming out of One Punch Man for a second time, I can say I was wrong, and this is a great anime that took the oversaturated shonen battle genre, turned it on its head by both reusing tropes in a community way while also telling something completely new and exciting with the formula of heroes. Many might claim it's the visuals or comedy that makes it special, but truthfully, it's the fleshed out and well detailed take on heroes that does. Everything else is just a bonus. One Punch Man follows our overpowered hero Saitama, who as you can guess deals with everything in a single punch. After events in his past, he began an intense workout routine, which is pretty standard for your average Joe wanting to get fit, but for some strange reason, a few years later he became so strong that nothing can beat him and everything can be dealt with a single punch. So because nothing challenges him, he lives a very bored lifestyle and the hero who does so because he wants to, not for the fame or money, but just as a hobby, needs to find ways to challenge himself and become the hero he truly dreams of being, which is basically him fighting people who can actually put up a fight against his immense power. The two big areas to One Punch Man's appeal is the comedy and the characters. Comedy wise, it starts off pretty straightforward. We get to understand why this man is so bored out of his mind, insert over the top villain, and bam, we are taken out. But as the series gets going, you'll start to notice more and more tropes from the battle shonen genre that are revealed and then get parodied. Most of these shows use a format of, here is the over-detailed backstory both for the character you're following and who they are fighting. People talk way too much before an attack, they over-detail everything, it makes no sense but for some strange reason, we call it hype, at least I know I do. One Punch Man does this, but either because of Saitama's monotone voice or dull face, he deals with them in such a boring and anticlimactic way it usually leaves us laughing. And even when it isn't in the action, he responds to these tropes in similar hilarious ways. One of the main characters who wants nothing more than to have Saitama be his mentor is a cyborg named Genis. When we first meet this man, he starts giving this overly complicated backstory that in any other shonen would continue and the author would attempt to move you because look at how much he suffered, blah 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 blah. At first, Saitama is on board listening in, but as Genis keeps talking more and more, he gets progressively more annoyed till he finally tells him to just stop talking. It's hilarious in each episode episode has a couple of moments like this sprinkled throughout. So whether it be comedy in or out of battle, the way it either made a fresh and new style of comedy or it was just parodying the genre, it usually leaves you amused if not laughing out loud with the characters all being rather memorable. Saitama, for as great as he is, because he is so overpowered and bored, scenes always will pop in a unique way. But I truly believe that this anime succeeds because of Saitama and the supporting cast backing him. Genis has a look that screams anti-hero if not villain, but wants to actually be a hero as strong as his master Saitama. It probably can never happen, as who knows why Saitama truly got this strong, that's part of the comedy. But the two's interactions range from hilarious, wanting to bash your head into the wall, to this is the best thing ever. Saitama on one hand hates him being around. He just wants to live a very peaceful life, where people know his name, he isn't bored because villains can actually put up a fight. Genis though, he brains up his day and hell, even worships him so much so even when bad things happen around him, he'll always have his back and even if Saitama doesn't want to admit it, he does love to have him around. Sometimes it's too much, but when situations occur like Genis moving in because he has mad stacks of money, Saitama can start loving his new best friend and roommate even more. Whether it be Moomin Rider, the man who rides in on a bicycle to battle, who represents your everyday average guy who understands what it means to be a hero, even if he isn't the most superpowered hero out there. Speedo sounds Sonic, the reoccurring villain to Saitama, with speed so ridiculous that if Saitama wasn't here, you'd probably think he's unbeatable. Bang, this old wise man who at first glance just acts like the old voice of wisdom, but quickly becomes a hardened badass who though had very few action sequences, he was actually one of the most memorable with his style in battle I found. Nearly every character you can point out and say this is a shonen trope, that's how they start off. But because they share an anime with Saitama, even if he isn't around, the way the author went about depicting them comes across as bending a trope we're used to into something that shapes itself into something with a fresh coat of paint and becomes something completely new. You get to see the over-the-top personalities and powers go about fighting heroes or villains, but the way their dialogue is directed, it generally is ridiculous and serious wrapped up into one beautiful package that you're left pondering whether to laugh or think it's brilliantly written, and at many points, it's all of the above. And because you have a plethora of characters who don't defeat enemies in a singular punch, you'll see well-directed and thought-out action sequences with many of these characters, as Saitama is usually busy with some 
some other task like trying to navigate a spaceship. My favorite episode to the series is episode 7. The premise is a giant meteor will be crashing down in the city. You assume, well, Saitama will punch it and all will be well. But then they direct it as, no, maybe Genesis will destroy it. It's a fairly typical battle shonen scene, lots of dialogue, planning out what to do, charging up your special move, another character tipping the scales, but oh no, he can't destroy it. In comes Saitama, and like you expect, he deals with it in one punch. But because he built up to it, you're cheering that he's finally here after thinking he wasn't needed to then, oh my god, he's needed, please come and save the day. I started off assuming, here we go again, but because it shifted over to Genis, who provided that standard battle series performance, you get a really nice steady build up to defeat to lastly the main hero saving the day. But the reason it's my favorite episode is the aftermath. Bang sees us as dear lord, he must be the strongest man alive. Genis sees us as my master is the greatest, however, even though he destroyed this meteor, the town was still damaged by the debris. Had he done nothing, the town would be completely gone, so despite appearance, this is still amazing and the city was saved. But of course, seeing your home like this would cause anyone to be mad, and seeing how he responds saying, be mad. Without me, this city would be gone and not repairable. I'm a hero not because of fame, but because I want to. Your opinion on me is completely meaningless because I don't act like a hero for your praise. I do so because I'm a hero for fun. That is where I truly became became a One Punch Man fan. I liked it up to that point, but when you see great comedy, action, and characters light up such as that, it's when One Punch Man truly shines the most. Though very close second favorite episode would have to be episode 9, where after the events of a nearly indestructible villain wipes the floor with many heroes, this villain gets defeated in the nick of time by Saitama. After a very intense battle with many heroes involved, instead of accepting the glory, he paints himself as a cheat so the crowd won't turn on the other fallen heroes who fought the beast before. For him. He claims he fought the tired sea king and now he gets all the glory. In doing so, the crowd turns on him and praises the heroes as being the ones who sacrificed the most and the one asshole in the crowd no longer can screw over the people that truly saved them. This is what and who Saitama is and moments like these really highlight one's writing and how strong the development is for both Saitama and this cast as a whole. There's interesting world mechanics at play such as the hero ranking system that after Saitama realizes that all his heroic deeds are going unnoticed, Genis points out that he isn't registered as a hero, so he isn't being recorded. Saitama, because of his low test scores, despite crushing the physical test, is a rank C, with Genis being a rank S as he aced both tests. It's a fun dynamic, watching the most powerful guy reluctantly work his way up in a BS system focused on fame and fortune, and how such a bored man responds to these scenes as Genis makes excuses to why he is so low in rankings because he loves this man just so much. Everything that makes a battle shown in what it is truly is present. The hero society, over-the-top villains, dragged out setups for fight sequences, ridiculous character designs and personalities, but because the man leading this tale is a bald, almost emotionless man named Saitama, you know everything will become unique by the time you leave every episode. Once the hero society stuff gets introduced and you see our central duo take these tests, it's where I truly got hooked on the series, as when One Punch Man has many aspects being explored at once, from comedy to world development to character growth, is where it truly shines the most. Up to that point, I was having fun, but something felt missing, and I think what it was is because Saitama didn't have a goal, it was hard to root for him because he always will win even if he is bored. So when he gets a low ranking in the hero system, you want to see him rise to rank S number one. You start thinking that even though physically he is the best, he still has goals to work towards, so as we start rooting for him, you start interested in this large supporting cast. One Punch Man started off as a fun comedy with great action that was well directed and full of thought for the power system with how fights would go down. But once you get into this tale, the story of Saitama and Genis climbing the rankings while dealing with the shonen design obstacles never stopped amusing me, because in terms of depicting what a hero truly is and should aim to be, Saitama is one of the best examples in all of anime, where a joke of a character actually gets fleshed out in hilariously entertaining ways, because at every possible moment he could jump in the rankings because, well, he deserves to be at the top, he always puts others first and sacrifices himself for the good of others who easily would toss him to the curb for their own self game. One Punch Man is so much more than a singular joke, but an over powered bald man, but rather it's a tale of what a hero should be while deconstructing this oversaturated battle shonen genre. 
Visually, I think Season 1 of One Punch Man is one of the best looking TV anime to have ever come out. People still love to throw around the term budget to explain why something looks good, and even though I've discussed this topic plenty of times, it needs to be restated here. One Punch Man doesn't look great because it has more money than your average anime. In fact, it's been confirmed One Punch Man had a very average budget, as like most anime out there. What makes or break an anime's visuals are a few key areas. The talent of the team, the amount of time animators have to work on frames, how many people are working on it as too many cooks in the kitchen isn't a good thing, strong leadership, passion for the project like in the case of the director here and the animators working on One Punch Man, etc. The more money you throw at something generally makes it look worse, because it means you have to hire more and more animators to get something done on time, which in result leads to sloppy looking visuals that are inconsistent from the last shot and prior episodes. Because One Punch Man had a strong schedule and passionate leadership, animators had the time to refine every shot, and in doing so, because they didn't have to rush every single action sequence, like you'll see with many big productions, you get this as an end result. Sharp character designs, fluid movements, and Sakuga every episode. Most studios are overworked and rushed because there's too much anime being made and not enough staff to go around. One Punch Man is the holy grail of anime production, where all the areas clicked and you see what an average anime budget should look like when studios and teams aren't pushed to their breaking limit. My favorite area to the visuals, however, is actually the character designs. Saitama might be one of the best looking characters in any shonen. He's plain, boring, and because of his design, his personality pops out all the better. This is a man with a thousand faces, so when he transitions from monotone to the best face imaginable, the impact is all the better. Every villain feels right at home, silly, powerful, and what you'd hope to see in a series such as this. Something to seem menacing, which makes their defeat all the funnier. Genis, as I mentioned earlier, had the anti-hero villain look at first glance, so seeing his character grow makes that design feel quite polar opposite to his goal, which was a nice contrast that I found. As usually, when I see a cyborg character, I expect no emotion, just a one-note design, but his visuals complemented his fairly interesting character arc that ranges from total badass to lovable and clueless goofball that Saitama manipulates a good amount. I truly don't believe that this anime dips visually. Every shot feels well detailed, polished, and when things go silly or highly action driven, the shifts in style always felt well executed, and you don't walk out thinking anything other than please let more studios have time to refine their shots because this shouldn't be an anomaly and should be the standard if only anime production wasn't so crunch heavy. The sound direction for this anime ranges from comical to metal as hell. The OST was made for me. Heavy wrists, intense drums, really just thrashing and headbanging songs meant to make this spectacle all the more intense. Electric guitars, piano melodies and ballads, electronic pieces, it's really perfection in every single song in this OST is as close to perfect, which after hearing the opening for the first time you won't be surprised by the soundtrack as you actually enter the episodes. It's fantastic when the background music is solid, but when it amplifies scenes and matches the mood, that's the sweet spot. The voice acting in the Japanese dub is quite stellar, Saitama has to be one of the best casted characters out there, as his personality is very easy to mess up. Bored boy with a lot of power. There's a million ways to direct that voice, so you have to really capture the idea one wanted perfectly. And safe to say, they did. Even before I was 100% on board with this anime, I love Saitama from the first minute, because his voice screamed perfection. To be able to get across boring, silly, to badass, all wrapped up into one package, backed by his amazing reactions, you really need the audio and visuals to work hand in hand selling this guy, and they absolutely did. Many of the voices for the side characters will come across like you expect at first glance, judging by their designs, but certain characters such as Genis also give it their all. So even when Saitama stuns you with his voice, you have enough talent to work alongside him so it never feels like Saitama is carrying the show, but rather it's the entire cast. A metal as hell soundtrack, well placed sound effects for action heavy scenes adding to the impact of destruction that we just witnessed, and great acting, what more can you really ask for? One Punch Man can easily be viewed as a show with a singular joke, the One Punch Man. But that's only one layer to the series. Saitama may handle everything with a singular punch, but what actually makes the show so compelling is the build-up to said punch, the characters' dialogue towards one another, the funny design, the stunning action, great personalities, the setup to these over-the-top sequences that sure, usually will result in Saitama ending the threat, but everything leading up to it is so well thought out that even though it has this reoccurring gag because it uses the world and cast of characters so brilliantly, it builds this amazing parody anime that also serves as a compelling 
adventure where you hope Saitama will find joy someday. That you might start off an episode thinking, do we really need to see another One Punch fight? But due to solid setup, by the time you reach it, you're out of your chair cheering him on because of how they direct this man to always come across as something new and interesting even though at a surface level, it really is the same old One Punch time and time again. But then it becomes something special by the end. Everyone who loves strong lead and supporting characters that really are memorable in their own way needs to watch this gem already if you haven't for some odd reason. I award One Punch Man my seal of approval. The first half may not have gripped me like the later episodes, but One Punch Man was charming from episode 1 and ended with episodes that truly impressed me from a pure entertainment factor, as well the characters themselves and how they were written. Really, One Punch Man is a story about self-improvement, about how light always defeats darkness in a pretty unique way that doesn't come across as cliche. It may start off as basic, but this basic story does turn out to be a lot more complex than many might want to give credit to, and by the time you leave Season 1, you'll see that Saitama and this show is definitely more than a One Punch gag. But that's all for this review. I can't wait to see where Season 2 will go, and hopefully the change in studios won't hinder this wonderful series. Let me know your thoughts on One Punch Man or this review down in that comment section below. Remember to leave a like if you did enjoy enjoy, and subscribe if you happen to be new around here. Lastly, if you want to go the extra mile and help make videos such as these possible, there's always my Patreon, but until next time everyone, please take care and have a good one. Also, watch Mob Psycho 100 if you haven't already, it's pretty tight.